Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Dick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number 13 running back start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, we're going to be going in depth into every single matchup from Thursday night football all the way until Monday night football, and I'll be telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the running backs in every single matchup. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below because not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 Fantasy Football Championship. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure to hit that like button down below to help boost this video up the algorithm so that more beautiful people like yourself can see today's video. I would also like to ask that if you guys are on Twitter and would like to follow me on there to please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. The link to my Twitter is also down below in the video description. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 13 running back start or sit decisions we begin with Thursday night football the Dallas Cowboys at the New Orleans Saints for the New Orleans Saints it does appear that Alvin Kamara is going to return to the team and he is going to be the starting running back on the team up against the Dallas Cowboys and obviously that is going to knock him up to be a starter in this game and that puts Mark Ingram on the bench Mark Ingram did miss last week but it does appear that he is good to go in this game but when Alvin Kamara is healthy he is going to be the guy touching the ball a majority of the time so Mark Ingram pivots to a sit in this game in terms of Alvin Kamara with Taysom Hill likely being the starting quarterback I'm a bit nervous now does that mean that I'm going to run clear away from Alvin Kamara of course not but I want to make things known I kind of want to put a bit of caution tape on Alvin Kamara because I think his top five potential is severely limited by Taysom Hill why is that because if you look at the numbers from the past with Alvin Kamara playing with a guy like Jameis Winston or Trevor Simeon compared to with Taysom Hill or you could date back to with Drew Brees versus with Taysom Hill the thing is that Taysom Hill just does not dump the ball off as much as a guy like Drew Brees, like Jameis Winston, like Trevor Simeon will. He would rather tap on his own chest and call his own number and run the ball himself instead of dumping the ball off to Alvin Kamara. Or on those plays where he could potentially hand the ball off to Alvin Kamara, he will decide that, you know what, I could score this fucking touchdown. I'm going to put the team on my back. Darren Sharper, hold my dick, and he's going to run himself into the end zone. And that severely limits the upside of Alvin Kamara. Now, could things change compared to the past 100%? Alvin Kamara is still one of the most talented running backs in the NFL. So Alvin Kamara is definitely a guy you want to be starting up against the Dallas Cowboys, but I do want to make it known that his upside could be very limited by Taysom Hill. For the Dallas Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott, there was a lot of talk after that game for the Dallas Cowboys that maybe Zeke would be limited, that maybe they'd put Zeke on ice and let the Tony Pollard experience happen for the next couple of weeks, and then they pivot back to Ezekiel Elliott when he's fully healthy because they don't want him to get hurt again, and that all makes sense. But then it comes out that Ezekiel Elliott is basically just going to be good to go this week up against the Saints. Now, could things change? This is a game on Thursday. He was banged up in that game up against the Las Vegas Raiders last week. So could Zeke potentially miss this game? 100%. If that is the case, then Tony Pollard pivots up to be a top five running back in fantasy football because without Zeke, he is going to be the workhorse running back for this team. But I do believe personally that Ezekiel Elliott is going to play in this game. And I believe he will get a bit of a reduced snap count and we will be seeing a lot more of Tony Pollard when compared to normal, which makes Tony Pollard a starting running back. But you also have to play Zeke because he is the number one guy on an offense that I think could put up a whole shit ton of points up against the New Orleans Saints, just like the Buffalo Bills did last week. So I like Zeke as well as Tony Pollard in this game. And again, Alvin Kamara is the number one running back on the team. So when he's healthy, you got to play him and you got to put Mr. Marky Mark Ingram Mr. Big Trust, woo woo, onto the bench. Next up, we move to the first game on the Sunday slate, and we got the New York Football Giants at the Miami Dolphins. My Miami Dolphins are on an absolute roll. Hadn't lost a game at all in November, and we're coming into December on fucking fire. And I personally believe that the Miami Dolphins roll up the New York Football Giants like a blunt and smoke them. Saquon Barkley. I don't know what is going on. Why are the Giants not giving this guy the ball more? Up against the Philadelphia Eagles, this was a close, low-scoring game all game long, and for some fucking reason, even with Jason Garrett fired, they are not feeding the rock to Saquon Barkley. Give the man the ball. He's the most talented player on this offense. 
hand the man the rock, dump the ball off to him, and great things are going to happen. I am starting to get very worried about Saquon Barkley. I don't think he's washed up or anything. I just don't think that the Giants give him the ball enough. Now, the Dolphins' defense in prior years, especially last year and earlier on in the season, sucked complete and utter donkey cock up against the run. But as of recently, they have gotten a bit tighter on that part of the game and have looked a lot better up against the run. So I do worry about Saquon Barkley this week, but I'm certainly going to be starting him. In terms of the Miami Dolphins, Miles Gaskin scored not one, but two tugs last week up against the Carolina Panthers. In that game, Miles Gaskin did see a lot of touches. It seems like, at least over the last two games, that the Miami Dolphins have fully committed to giving Miles Gaskin the workload that he deserves. Now, Philip Lindsay is there coming from Denver, so it is likely that we keep seeing him a little bit involved in the game, but in my opinion, Miles Gaskin is still the lead running back on the team, and going up against the Giants, I think Miles Gaskin could have a hell of a game, so he's definitely a guy that I'm looking to start this week. For the Giants, their backup running back, Devontae Booker, was pretty solid in Saquon Barkley's absence, but again, Saquon Barkley is the guy seeing a majority of the touches, so you don't want to be starting him. Philip Lindsay is a great blocking running back. He absolutely pancakes guys back there. Despite the fact that he's like five foot four, he's definitely taller than that. Sorry, Philip Lindsay, if you're listening to this video, but he's a real short guy. He is able to block quite well for Tua Tungavailoa. He's going to be seeing some touches in this game, but unless he takes one to the house from like 40 yards out, he doesn't really have all that much fantasy value, unless, of course, Miles Gaskin was to get hurt, but we don't root for injuries. Knock on wood for that one. Next up, we move to the Indianapolis Colts at the Houston Texans. Jonathan Taylor has had a quote-unquote down game up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, he was coming off of a week where the man scored five fucking touchdowns, so anything short of that would be a quote-unquote disappointment. And he actually didn't have 100 yards for, I believe, the first time in like four games, so the Bucs contained him kind of. He still had an all right fantasy day. Now he's going up against the Houston Texans. This should be a certified smackdown like it's in the WWE. I expect Jonathan Taylor to run a fucking train on the Houston Texans defense. So obviously you're going to be starting him. You're starting him any game regardless of the defense he's going up against. But this week, this matchup is juicy. Chef's kiss, Manufweek. I love him up against the Texans in terms of the Texans running backs. They got David Johnson, Mr. 3.1 yards per carry. They got Rex Burke. Kid, who I actually like a little bit more than David Johnson, but at the end of the day, this matchup is far from ideal up against the Colts defense, so I'm going to just be setting Rex Burkhead as well as David Johnson, and Jonathan Taylor really just has a strong stranglehold over this running back core. He's the clear workhorse running back, and they've kind of sifted away from Naheem Hines, so I don't think that Naheem Hines is going to be all that valuable for fantasy football going forward. I think you can actually start Rex Burkhead in better matchups, but this is far from an ideal match up up against the Colts, so I'm only going to be starting Jonathan Taylor in this game. Next up, we move to the Minnesota Vikings at the Detroit Lions. Both of the running backs likely not to play in this game. It seems as though Dalvin Cook is going to miss at least two games with this injury. A couple of years ago in 2019, he had a very similar injury and missed two games, so the expectation right now based upon everything that I've read is that it's going to be two or three games for Dalvin Cook. DeAndre Swift for the Detroit Lions gets hurt on Thanksgiving, and there's talks about how maybe he could play, but based upon what I've seen out of Dan Campbell, head coach of the Detroit Lions, it seems like it's a straight-up uphill climb that I highly doubt DeAndre Swift is going to be able to climb fucking Mount Everest to be able to play in this game. So my expectation is that Alexander Madison is the lead back for the Vikings and that Jamal Williams is the lead back for the Detroit Lions. Jamal Williams, when given carries earlier on in the season, especially in week one up against the San Francisco 49ers, really did show that he is a solid running back. And then after DeAndre Swift got hurt up against the Chicago Bears, we saw Jamal Williams look pretty solid in that game as well. So I'm definitely going to be starting him on the week. Is his upside as similar as Alexander Madison's? Of course not, because the Lions are a complete and utter fucking dumpster fire. But I am still going to be starting Jamal Williams because I think he will be able to play quite well and be seeing a decent amount of dump offs up against the Minnesota Vikings. For the Vikings, Alexander Madison is a locked and loaded running back one when Dalvin Cook is not there, and it's very simple. It's because when Dalvin Cook is there, Alexander Madison is basically nowhere to be seen. But when Cook is hurt, Alexander Madison basically becomes Dalvin Cook. Like, he gets that role, but he's not as good as Dalvin Cook. But he's still going to be getting fed the rock game in and game out without Dalvin Cook. And in this juicy matchup up against a garbage Detroit Lions defense, I expect Alexander Madison to mop the floor with that Detroit Lions defense. So I love Madison in this game. And then we got the backup running backs here. 
For the Lions, we got Jamar Jefferson. Most people don't even want to start the starting running back on the Lions in Jamal Williams, so there's no way you're going to want to start the backup. I am very confident, though, with Jamal Williams. I'm not one of those people. And then for the Minnesota Vikings, they've got Keen and his last name, a little bit complicated to pronounce. And I don't want to sound like an asshole giving him the wrong pronunciation if, obviously, Dalvin Cook is out for a long period of time and we see this Keen fellow carry the rock a lot, then I will go ahead and learn how to pronounce his name. But for right now, I don't think it's very important. You're going to be sitting both of those guys down on the bench. Next up, we pivot to the Philadelphia Eagles at the New York Jumbo Jets. But before we break down this game in terms of the running back position, I would like to ask that if you have ended up enjoying thus far, to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button. I would appreciate it a ton. So the Eagles at the Jumbo Jets. This game is down astronomical at the running back position. A lot of people are going to clamor to start Miles Sanders in this game. This is a juicy matchup. The Jets' defense isn't very good at all. But at the end of the day, I just don't think I could trust Miles Sanders. Every single week that this motherfucker is healthy, we try to do this mental gymnastics to talk ourselves into starting Miles Sanders because, oh, he's this guy out of Penn State. He's shown some flashes. If he's given the ball correctly, if they actually utilize him correctly, he could be great. And I agree with that statement. If they utilize him correctly, he could be great. But Nick Sirianni, that guy has no idea what he's fucking doing. They like to run the ball, but instead of giving the ball to Miles Sanders, Boston Scott's seeing the ball. Jordan Howard probably not going to play in this game, and it does not matter at all. I understand that a lot of you are going to start Miles Sanders, and if you're in a pickle, sure, I would start him as well because this matchup is about as juicy as it gets up against the Jumbo Jets defense. But at the same time, I would not be surprised at all if this guy was a complete and utter bust on the week. Because the matchup is just so good, and he never lives up to those expectations. He hasn't scored over 10 half PPR points since week fucking one. Week number one. That was months ago at this point. Months ago. I just don't trust Miles Sanders, and I honestly don't think you should either. So I'm sitting him down in this game. Last week, I tried to buy back in. I was thinking about the matchup up against the Giants. Oh, the Eagles should be able to play well in this game. Doesn't happen. Miles Sanders is terrible. I just don't trust him, so I'm sitting him down. And I'm going to play Boston Scott because it seems like Nick Sirianni has some type of love affection for Boston Scott. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Scott found the end zone in this game. For the Jets, we're talking up Ty Johnson, talking about Tevin Coleman last week, talking about Michael P. Ryan. But apparently, that Walter motherfucker whose first name is escaping my brain, he's the one who gets the tug in that game. Tevin Coleman is the running back, though, that was the leader in touches in that game. I think he'll be the leader in touches this week up against the Eagles. I don't love this game for the Jets, but I think Tevin Coleman will be able to get it done. Both of these guys, though, are kind of bottom-of-the-barrel starts where you're really searching for some depth there to go ahead and play a running back, but I would start Scott as well as Coleman. And Ty Johnson, he's just not that guy, pal, I guess. I mean, that joke is fucking as old as it gets at this point, but Ty Johnson really was not the guy last week I thought he was going to be. It is what it is. Just go ahead and play Tevin Coleman this week if you want to start one of the Jets running backs. Next up, we got the Arizona Cardinals at the Chicago, Chicago Bears. Chase Edmonds does not appear to be good to go for this game, so we get James Conner again. It appears that Kyler Murray should be good to go this week, and that is amazing for James Conner because I think the offense is just going to work so much more fluently with Kyler Murray under center, so I love James Conner in this matchup up against the Chicago Bears last week. David Montgomery has this fucking cupcake matchup up against the Lions. Everyone thinks this is going to be an easy matchup. Everyone thinks that David Montgomery, including myself, was going to devour the Lions defense, and that was not the case. That was a snooze fest of a game, Bears versus the Lions. I don't love this matchup for David Montgomery, but he is still the lead running back of the team without a doubt, and I think that if Matt Nagy could pull his head out of his ass and understand that they need to run the ball a little bit more, then David Montgomery will have a lot of value in this game. Not a guy, though, that I will proclaim to be a top 12 running back on the week. I think James Conner certainly has that upside up against the Bears defense. The other running backs in this game, we got Eno Benjamin for the Arizona Cardinals. We'll be seeing some touches in this game, but not a very fantasy viable option. And then we got Khalil Herbert, the pervert of the Chicago Bears. Did actually look quite good when David Montgomery was banged up, but David Montgomery's healthy. And he's going to be seeing a lot of the workload for the running back. So Khalil Herbert is best left on your bench. Next up, we move to the L.A. Chargers at the Cincinnati Bengals. And Joe Mixon, this man is on fire. He's basically scoring a touchdown every single game down the stretch of the season. And the Chargers defense is down astronomical, down tremendous when it comes 
to defending the run. So this is an absolute smash matchup for Joe Mixon. I expect him to eviscerate the LA Chargers defense. I was sky high on Joe Mixon last season. He ends up getting hurt. And then coming into this year, I just couldn't completely sell myself on Joe Mixon again. I saw what he did last last year to me. Basically bent me over the table and fucking raw dog me without even the use of lube. And it hurt me immensely. But at the end of the day, I should have seen this coming because I know that Joe Mixon is a very talented running back. And going up against the LA Chargers again, the man is on fire. You're going to start him up this week with supreme confidence for the LA Chargers. Austin Eckler is just the premier option on this team. Even when Herbert isn't playing well, even when Keenan Allen, even when Mike Williams isn't playing well, it seems like Austin Eckler is just a constant inside of the stat sheet in terms of fantasy football. This guy has big games every single week. Doesn't matter if the Chargers are getting pounded in the game. Doesn't matter if the Chargers are doing the pounding in the game. Austin Eckler always has a great day, and I think he could get it done here easily up against the Bengals defense. Then the other running backs here, not even very noteworthy at all, in my opinion. Joshua Kelly, the backup for Austin Eckler, barely graces the field. Samaj P. Ryan, the backup for Joe Mixon. When Mixon is healthy, he's barely touching the field. Joe Mixon and Austin Eckler, clearly upper echelon starts on the week. Next up, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons, and Uncle Lenny last week scored not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns. It's even in his name. He's Leonard Fournette. Leonard Four fucking tugs last week. Robert Kraft would be proud with the amount of tugs that guy got in one day. Leonard Fournette going up against the Falcons. This is a very easy matchup. I don't think he's going to score four touchdowns again. Some people might expect that because the Falcons defense doesn't look good at all. I think Leonard Fournette is a very viable option this week. And I would be surprised if he didn't find the end zone at least once. Cordero Patterson, I say this every single week. This guy's basically fucking Bo Jackson or Walter Payton and Jerry Rice combined or whatever wide receiver you want. Because in reality, is Cordero Patterson that? Of course not. It's a joke. But this guy gets so much use on the Falcons. The guy's running in touchdowns. He's catching touchdowns. He is the only piece of this offense that is immune to the bullshit of the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan has been playing terrible over the last three games, and it doesn't matter at all because besides one game when Cordero Patterson got hurt, the guy's eaten. He's eaten every single game. It doesn't matter how shit the Falcons have been. Cordero Patterson has been dominant game in and game out. But Nick, the Buccaneers defense is good up against the run. It doesn't matter because Patterson doesn't even need to run the ball. He could just go out wide and catch a pass. The man is amazing. I love Cordero Patterson this week up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. Ronald Jones finds the end zone last week. Huge round of applause for him, but who gives a fuck because Uncle Lenny's clearly the guy there. The man is on a two-game streak of scoring touchdowns as well, and I still don't even care for Ronald Jones. I just don't give a fuck. Leonard Fournette is clearly the guy there. I'm firing him up. If you are really risky, you got those huge balls, then go ahead and play Ronald Jones like Frank Gore. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to be playing Ronald Jones. Mike Davis is going to be a sit for me as well. Cordero Patterson is clearly the lead back on this team. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the LA Rams. Darrell Henderson is banged up. He is, at least in my opinion, I think he's going to be good to go. But it is something to monitor all week long if Darrell Henderson does not play then obviously you're not going to play Darrell Henderson, and then you're going to go ahead and shift up and play Sony Michelle because Sony Michelle will be seeing probably 70% of the snaps on the team if that is the case where Darrell Henderson is out. When Darrell Henderson is in, Sony Michelle is irrelevant, but when Darrell Henderson is out, Sony Michelle gets to relive his glory days as the lead running back for the Patriots. So I like Sony Michelle here up against the Jacksonville Jaguars defense if Henderson doesn't play. But again, I do expect Henderson to play. And if he does play, he does have top five upside as long as there's no worry about like a snap restriction or something, which is possible when it comes to injured players. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, James Robinson, for some reason in some games, it's like Urban Meyer fucking forgets that he's on his team just like he forgot he had a wife when that girl was grinding on him on the bar but at the end of the day James Robinson is one of the better running backs in fantasy football when the guy is on when uh, Urban Meyer is able to actually give him the rock the guy's uber productive going up against the LA Rams defense who just got pounded out by AJ Dillon last week I think that James Robinson can get it done and it's very similar to with 
Darrell Henderson. If James Robinson is healthy, Carlos Hyde's basically irrelevant. But if James Robinson was to get injured again, knock on wood, we don't root for injuries, then Carlos Hyde would be very fantasy relevant because the amount of touches that he gets. Not that he's the second coming of fucking Christian McCaffrey or something, but it's because of the volume he would get. Next up, we move to the Washington football team at the Turn Your Volume Down, the Las Vegas Raiders. The Washington football team suffered an injury last night to J.D. McKissick, but it appears that he's going to be just fine according to J.D. McKissick. Now, there has been no official ruling of J.D. McKissick in or out of this game. If J.D. McKissick doesn't play, Antonio Gibson saw over 30 touches in their game last night in that matchup up against the Seattle Seahawks. If J.D. McKissick is out, I am 100% confident in proclaiming that Antonio Gibson could be a top five running back on the week. But if J.D. McKissick plays, there's still the chance that J.D. McKissick vultures two touchdowns like he did last night, and then Gibson maybe doesn't get that crazy amount of touches, and Antonio Gibson ends up shitting the bed. This running back combo of Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick has probably made people lose hair, probably had people's hair turn gray, trying to figure out what the fuck to do with these running backs every single week. It appears that Gibson's on a roll, so I'm going to start him whether J.D. McKissick is healthy or not, but it is very annoying. It has been so frustrating all year long, but I like Gibson up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Josh Jacobs is one of those running backs that I just never see being a top 12 guy, but it's damn near impossible to sit down on the bench because he's never really going to disappoint you. You've seen earlier on in the season with Gruden, recently with the new head coach, they just give the ball to this guy. They just give him the rock. And regardless of how productive he is, he typically tops 10 half PPR, 10 PPR points every single game and is a very reliable running back. Is he ever going to crack the top 10 in a majority of weeks? Of course not. But he does get the volume. The football team defense did look stout last night, but I do think that was a bit of a flash in the pan because Russ played like such shit. I do think that the Washington football team defense is not all that good, and this could be a very high-scoring back-and-forth game, but I will start Josh Jacobs in this game. And Kenyon Drake has just been pushed out of the offense. I don't know what happened earlier on in the season. We were seeing some Kenyon Drake, and then recently, like two, three weeks ago, we were seeing some Kenyon Drake, and then recently, he's just been nowhere to be found. So based upon that, based upon the fact that we haven't seen all that much Drake recently, I would just go ahead and let him ride the bench. Next up, we move to a AFC North matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh, and man, oh man, do the Steelers fucking stink. The Steelers and not really the Steelers as a whole, but Big Ben. This motherfucker has lost all touch. He looks terrible out there. He looks like he should be in a fucking retirement home. I don't know how they're even still starting him, if I'm being honest with you. That's how bad he looks, and that hurts Najee Harris. But at the same time, besides last week, normally Najee Harris is just immune to any bad goings or any shortcomings from Big Ben. When Big Ben typically goes out there and plays terrible, Najee still eats. And when Big Ben looks pretty solid, or not pretty solid, but just, all right, better than terrible, then Najee Harris still has a good game. Last week was the exception to that, but I still do think that Najee Harris will be able to get it done this week. So I'm still firing him up with a lot of confidence. For the Baltimore Ravens, Devontae Freeman still appears to be the lead back on the team going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense may have sounded scary earlier on in the year, but recently that Steelers defense hasn't had that that same ferociousness, I think would be the word to use there. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, but they're just not as scary as they used to be. Like, they don't look as good. So I think Devontae Freeman should still be able to get it done. And Latavius Murray would be a sit for me because Devontae Freeman is still the lead back on the Baltimore Ravens. Next up, we move to the San Francisco 49ers at the Seattle Seahawks. And I tweeted out last night during the Seattle Seahawks game up against the Washington football team that Alex Collins literally looks like, have you guys ever had a bad dream where you're running away from a bad guy. You're running away from a ghost, a zombie, an evildoer, and you just can't run as fast, right? You're just running slower than you can run in real life. Now, I'm not fucking Hussein Bolt in real life, but I typically can run much faster in real life when compared to a nightmare. That's basically how Alex Collins runs. The guy runs in slow motion. He runs like he has some cinder blocks tied to his feet, like he was just killed by the mob and thrown into the middle of the ocean. That is what Alec Collins runs like. The guy fucking stinks, and I'm not starting him up against the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm not starting Mr. Wiki Wiki DJ Dallas. Russell Wilson stinks. He stinks. Mr. 
unlimited, more like Mr. Limited. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because the guy is limited. He can't do anything. He playing. He's playing like shit. He really is. And are the Seahawks going to get rid of him? Are they going to can Pete Carroll? I have no idea, but it's pretty funny, if I'm being honest with you. Just how much people try to talk themselves, doing that mental gymnastics I talked about earlier, trying to talk themselves in a Russ. I'm not going to tell you to start Russ this week. I told you to do it the last two weeks. I told you it was risky, so I didn't really like it. But I said, hey, if you're in a pickle, you can start him. No more. No more with that. Russ stinks right now. He's clearly banged up. It's not that he's a bad quarterback. He's just still hurt. Uh, for the 49ers, Elijah Mitchell, all that fab you paid for him earlier on in the season, that waiver wire pickup from earlier on in the season, it has paid off tenfold up against the Seattle Seahawks. I expect him to run a train. Jeff Wilson Jr. is the backup for the 49ers, but he is just not going to be seeing a lot of touches with Elijah Mitchell running so effectively. So I love Mitchell in this matchup up against Seattle. Next up, we got the Denver Broncos at the Kansas City Chiefs for Sunday night football. Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams for the Broncos. You're starting both of them every single week. It is very up in the air which one's going to outscore the other one. On the season as a whole, I believe Melvin Gordon has outscored Javante Williams. But if you're watching the games, you could easily see that the eye test would go to Javante Williams because he does look like he has more burst. But that would make sense, right? Javante Williams is a rookie. Melvin Gordon has been in the NFL for a couple of years, so maybe he's not as fast as he used to be. But he's still a fantasy-relevant player going up against the Chiefs defense that has looked better as of recently. But I do think that Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams could get very loose in this game, like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. And I expect that Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams are certainly worthy of a start this week. For the Chiefs, Clyde edwards Hilaire. the last time they played, they were on bye last week. The man hit the defender of the Dallas Cowboys with the peace sign. Tyreek Hill style and got a fine for $10,000. I'm sure he doesn't give a fuck though. That was a solid run. Clyde Edwards Alaire hasn't looked great all year up against the Broncos defense. Not an amazing matchup, but I do think Clyde Edwards Alaire will be able to get it done. So I'm starting him this week. And Darrell Williams is kind of an afterthought when Clyde Edwards Alaire, Mr. CEH, is healthy. Final game. Here we got Monday night football between the New England Deflatriots at the Buffalo Bills. A pivotal matchup for the crown of the AFC East. The Patriots, 8-4. and four. The Bills, 7-4. and four. Who is going to win this game? Probably the Patriots, because Bill Belichick, that evil motherfucker, just wins every single game. Doesn't matter if it's Tom Brady. Doesn't matter if it's this fat fuck from Alabama, Mac Jones. It doesn't matter at all. The Patriots will probably win this game. I hope I'm wrong. I hope both of these teams have a bad game. I hope they tie, and I hope as a Dolphins fan that we win, and they just lose every other game, and we, we get the crown in the AFC East. Is that possible? Of course not. That's not going to happen, but that's what I hope for in this game. But in terms of fantasy football, obviously, the Patriots running backs have just had so much value as of recently, that being Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. To me, Harris is still the lead back on the team and is definitely much, safe, much safer than Stevenson, but I would be willing to start Stevenson in this game. But, but Nick, the Buffalo Bills locked up Tony Jones last week. Um, they destroyed the Saints. Doesn't that mean that they're going to look really good in this game up against the Patriots? No, probably not, right? The Patriots offense is way different than Trevor Simeon and the Saints. So I like Harris and Stevenson in this game. I think if you are really down astronomical at the running back position, you could start Matt Breida because he does appear to be the startable running back out of that grouping of Devin Singletary, Matt Breida, and Zach Moss if he's not a healthy scratch in this game. But up against the Patriots defense that has looked so stout as of recently, there's no way I really want to be starting any of these Bills running backs. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure to hit that like button as well as hitting that subscribe button down below. I would appreciate it a ton. I love you guys all. Hope you have a great rest of your guys Tuesday. And as always, good boy.